Messianic Aryan Radio. Only one God. Hello, everybody. This is Elisa Rodriguez, and this is the Aryan Orthodox Church. Hopefully, you guys are doing really well. Um, let's see here. <clears throat> so today we're going to be talking about Raymond Brown and um, what he's been doing, um, his writings and uh, what his thoughts are on the doctrine of the Trinity. Because sometimes we find that there are those that admit what we already know about what's going on and uh, what we know about the Trinity being not necessarily as true as we thought it would be. So um, <clears throat> what we want to do right now is just look into um, what he said, what his thoughts were, and um, where everything stands as far as um, where the Doctrine of the Trinity began. So, <clears throat> Raymond Brown says in his book, uh, Biblical Exegesis and Doctrine, he wrote in 1985, on pages 30, 31, and 33, he says, In the olden days, before Vatican II, it was apparent, even against the background of sometimes unsophisticated biblical exegesis, that certain doctrines of the Roman Catholic Church were not easily detectable in the New Testament. In a widely held thesis of two sources of revelation, scripture and tradition, so it could be maintained that such doctrines were passed on orally as part of the living tradition of the church and were simply not mentioned until a much later era because no one questioned them. A more nuanced thesis was that such doctrines could be logically derived in a more syllog syllogistic manner from ideas of affirmation that were in the Bible. Vatican II changed the focus of the discussion Significantly, the draft of the schema of the sources, plural, of Revelation in the Council of Nicaea, uh, I'm sorry, Council in November 1962, was rejected. Doctrines for which there is no sufficient witness in the Bible are dealt with in another manner. A more uh, sophisticated theory of hermeneutics argues that the written books of the Bible as literary artifacts had a life of their own, and so their meaning involves the ongoing interpretation of them, the Christian community. So <clears throat> he's saying that, according to him, his understanding, that what's being, what's being said or what's being understood is from possibly a couple of sources. So, and he's a Catholic person. Uh, priest. So he's saying that it's possible that it came from scripture and tradition together. So the do doctrine of the Trinity and some of the other doctrines that they have could be coming from scripture and tradition together. So that so that there's like uh, this fictitious um, oral kind of like the oral interpretations brought down, handed down, but it was never understood or never written down. Now that to me is absolutely ludicrous. Um, so then he says that there's another possibility, a more specific way of looking at it is that um, that the Bible itself, that the Bible itself, talking about the New Testament, is not where it, the understanding should be, but that it's an evolving interpretation of the truth and that we have an evolving way of learning. So the way we know now could change in the next in the future. So essentially what he's saying is that another possibility could be that we don't know everything yet and that we could possibly be uh, deciding to change our views to be something else. Now that's he's speaking for the Catholic Church obviously. And so that kind of gives us an understanding on why the Catholic Church is saying, oh, okay, well, now homosexuality, you know, if, if that's the way they're going, homosexuality is okay, um, you know, abortion okay, uh, trans, whatever, gay priests, whatever, women priests, whatever. All of those things 
could evolve into the understanding is what he's saying that it's not set in stone we could evolve this standard into something else it's possible is what he's saying i don't agree with that but that's where he's coming from and you get to get the gist and the ideas of what the catholic church how the catholic church believes the catholic church believes that it's possible to say that what the apostles wrote were just infantile understandings and that later on it just grew to be more mature. That's so dangerous to say, you know, what the apostles taught is not the truth. Now, what did Paul say? He said, look, if someone comes to you and teaches you a different gospel than what we're telling you, what we're telling you, so you have to go with what Paul, what John, what they're writing, what the apostles are writing and if they're changing that standard if something different than what they have written down then he's saying let them be accursed so Paul could not write that if he thought that the scripture could be manipulated or changed or the standard of of truth was wishy-washy and so um we see the attitude of the of the Catholic Church that things can change. You know, you could, you know, yesterday, you know, Jesus was against adultery, but today he could be good for adultery. It's always changing. It's kind of what they're saying. And uh, we know that's the lie from the devil. So concerning the doctrine of the Trinity, uh, Brown wrote, nevertheless, and this is amazing, nevertheless, in no New Testament passage, not even in Matthew, uh, twenty-eight, nineteen. Baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Is there precise? Uh, is there precision about the divine, the three divine persons, co-equal but distinct, and one divine nature? The core dogma of the Trinity. He says Greek philosophy sharpened by continuing theological disputes in the second, from the second, in the church from the 2nd to the 5th centuries contributed to the classical formulation of the dogma. So he's saying there that Greek philosophy sharpened or improved by continuing theological disputes in the church from the 2nd to the 5th centuries that that philosophy sharpening the truth or sharpening the the argumentative style of, of these guys contributed to them developing the, the dogma or the trinity. So he says, if tradition implies, he's saying if the tradition, or, or if people are saying that the tradition of the church, he says if tradition implies that first century Christianity already understood three co-equal but distinct divine persons and one divine nature, but had not developed the price, precise terminology, I would dissent. He's saying, I'm not, I wouldn't agree with that. I, he's, and he's a respected, regardless of, you know, these staunch Trinitarians who will turn their back on anybody. If you get a Trinitarian to say something true that's against the doctrine of the Trinity, they'll just toss that person in the trash, honestly. But um, he's saying that there, it's not in the, it's not in the, if the tradition is saying that there was a doctrine of the Trinity, he's saying it's not there. Honestly, it's a lie. It's pretty much what he's saying. I would not agree with that. He says, he goes on to say, neither the terminology, right, which is uh, the homoousius, neither the terminology nor the basic ideas had reached clarity in the first century. In the first century. So that's from zero to a hundred. There was no terminology. There was no tr Trinitarianism, no way of saying Trinity, no concept of three in one, none, none of that. Although the word did exist, and we looked at Christopher Steed's study the word did exist, but they didn't use it. So no terminology about that in the first century. Problems and disputes were required before clarity came. To him, he's saying clarity. I'm saying uh, manipulation. So he thinks that the problems and the, and the disputes between people made them decide on the Trinity as an answer. But that's not what the Bible shows. That's not what... That's not what that's not the way you do things, is add to the to the truth. So he says problems and disputes were required before the clarity came. In other words, we're going to argue about stuff until we get confused and come up with something stupid. Precisely because 
The, tr the Trinitarian line of development was not the only line of thought detectable in the New Testament. He's saying it's not Trinitarianism is not the only thing you can find in the New Testament. It's not. He's saying there's other things that you could put in there and believe in the New Testament and have no problem. Uh, and one of them is Arianism. So he says, uh, one must posit the guidance of the Holy Spirit and institution of faith as the church came to its decision. So he, there he's saying, look, we've got to believe that the Holy Spirit led these people to say that the doctrine of Trinity is true and that we have to believe in faith that, that the church came to this answer. That's not the answer. I'm sorry. Just believe that it's true regardless of whatever the Bible says, whatever the uh, church, you know, whatever the truth says, whatever the apostles say, we have to just believe that it's true. No, no, you don't believe that it's true unless it's in the Bible. That is the basic core um, way that you're taught. You're taught, look, look in the Bible, and if it doesn't say it in the Bible, it's not true. Use the Bible as your resource. You're told that all the time. Use the Bible as your resource. Don't go any other way astray from where the Bible says. Um, don't just use one doctrine. Use the context. You know, get the whole story. Look at it as a whole. I mean, there's all kinds of things. Hermeneutics in the time of, 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 of their perspective at the time. And, um, and uh, you know, exegesis and eisegesis and, and all that stuff. You're told to use the word as a reference point. But then... When you do look at the Bible for a reference point, like, let's say, uh, Martin Luther did and said, hey, look, nowhere in the Bible does it say that we can we have to pay indulgences for people to go to heaven that are already dead. We can't purchase people's souls to go to heaven because Jesus is the one who died for our sins and each one of us are responsible to, you know, to do this. And I'm sure there's a lot of people that are like the idea of paying for people to go to heaven. I mean... First of all, they love their 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 dead family members and they would wish to be able to get them to heaven even though they made bad decisions. Um, and sounds great, but that's not the way it works. You can't just pay some money to, to the church and say, hey, um, can you do me a favor and send this guy, you know, give him a pardon and get him out of hell real quick so he can go into heaven so I can check him out when, when we get done with this. No, it's not. That's not the way it is, unfortunately. So, uh, or fortunately, because it's it would make cause a problem. So we need to see that when Martin Luther starts seeing these problems in Scripture, he says to the church, "Hey, this is not the way it is. This is not the way it is. You guys are just trying to make money off of people." Um, and he realized that all they're after is the money, and that it was a business for them. And so. Um, he went off on him, and he told the truth and everything else. And the church went against him and said, no, 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 you're ridiculous. Same thing with Jan Hus saying, you don't have to, you know, the church had so much control. They were like, you, your city is not, I mean, the church was a controlling entity back then. It was the government. Um, and so that was the, the issue was that the church was the government. And if you didn't believe what the government church said, you're pretty much going against the government and they would say you can't get married, you can't be baptized, you can't be communion, you can't, um, if you have any children, you're out of wedlock unless the church says it's good. I mean, it's, that's absolute control. And so that's what they're saying here, that the, the we're, we're saying that if you see in the Bible that the doctrine of the Trinity is not true, the church is going to come against you because you're coming against an institution that is intended on using fear and false doctrine to control you. And so you have to be brave like Martin Luther. You have to be brave like Jan Hus and uh, John Wycliffe. You have to be brave enough like Tyndale to, to try to get the truth out and teach the truth and not worry about what people say, the excuses the church says. It's a mystery. You can't understand it and everything else. But then there's so much scripture that shows that it's not true. So watch these videos. Look at the rest of the videos. Find something interesting and, and learn and see, is it in the Bible? Where in the Bible does it say that there's a three-in-one God? Um, and you're going to find out that some scriptures that are in there were not in the Old Test, not, not in the Old Bibles and so on. So study, study, study. 
and uh, see the heart of the Catholic Church here. And that's who gave you the doctrine of the Trinity.